All right, ready to dive deep. Today, we're all about experimental designs, the secret sauce of behavior change. We're talking knowing for sure if something works, not just hoping it does. Exactly. And we're breaking down two big ones from Cooper Chapter 9, multiple baseline designs and the intriguing changing criterion design. These are how you figure out if that new strategy is legit or just a fluke. Let's say you're a teacher, right? New method for fractions, maybe pizza themed, who knows, kids get it, but is it just a sugar rush? Or that one math whiz? That's where the multiple baseline design comes in. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking away the pizza, we introduce it in stages. Okay, walk me through. Imagine, pizza loving students want to see if this method boosts their fraction skills. We divide them into groups, not everyone gets pizza at once. Got it, so across subjects, multiple baseline. Right? You got it. Start with one group, pizza powered fractions, track their progress, after a while, next group, and so on. Staggering shows if improvement is tied to the pizza method. So if each group starts acing fractions right after the pizza method, then it's the method, not something random. Exactly. Now, breaking a bad habit, like checking your phone every five seconds, we've all been there, across settings, multiple baselines your friend. Instead of groups, different parts of your life. Precisely. Phone checking intervention, maybe silencing notifications, first at work. No more sneaky scrolls during meetings. Exactly. Yeah. Track phone use at work. Then same intervention at home, then maybe the gym, you know, scrolling between sets. So if it works everywhere, it's really working. You got it. One more type. Across behaviors, same intervention, different behaviors, same person. Okay, that's where it gets interesting. Example. Picture this. Those football players in Cooper learning plays. Coaches wanted to know if specific goals actually helped. Oh, yeah, the football team. Loved that one. So across behaviors with athletes, how? Well... Not just overall performance, they focused on reads, drops, and tackles. Measured each skill, then introduced goal setting for each skill one at a time. So like tackling those skills in layers, did they just say set some goals or more structured? Got specific key with this design. Worked with players, clear goals like increase successful reads by 10% or reduce dropped passes by 5%. Results were pretty amazing. Each skill improved but only when they added goal setting for that skill. Hold on, that's seriously cool. So a jump in reads when they started goal setting for that, but drops and tackles stayed the same until those got their own goal setting boost, neck level coaching. It is, that's the power of this design. Staggery the goal setting showed it was the goals, not something random like the weather or a pep talk. Makes sense. Isolating each behavior, then the intervention, the goal setting, you see what's really working, like detective work. I like how you think you've hit on something crucial. Isolating variables. So three variations. Across subjects, across settings, and across behaviors. This is going to be a catch, right? When wouldn't you use this design? Yeah, you just always got to think critically. First off, the behaviors, whether it's football skills or where you check your phone, they need to be independent enough not to change together naturally. So if me checking my phone less at work magically made me check it less at the gym without even trying, then that messes up the whole across settings thing, right? Because yeah. then... Who knows what caused it? Exactly. Got to find that sweet spot. Yeah. Behaviors independent enough for a valid comparison, but similar enough that the same intervention makes sense for all of them. It's all about that balance. Okay, so the behaviors can't be too intertwined. What else? Okay, so we've got these awesome multiple baseline designs, but life's not always so neat, right? What if, say, a new student joins that pizza-loving fraction group mid-study? What then? Ah, that's where those variations on the multiple baseline design come in handy. Researchers were adaptable. All right, hit me with it. What's the game plan when you can't just rewind real life? Imagine, yeah, you're a therapist working with a group, maybe on public speaking anxiety. Got your baselines, intervention started, and bam, new client. Oh, talk about a curveball. Do you just say, wait your turn? Not necessarily. We've got the delayed multiple baseline, like adding an ingredient to your recipe without starting over. So you'd start a fresh baseline for the new client, even though the others are already working on their fear of public speaking. Exactly. Ideal to start at the same time, sure, but this delayed approach is key when new folks pop up or when it's just not ethical to withhold something that could be really helpful. Right, gotta balance that science with compassion. Speaking of which, that example in Cooper about teaching kids to resist abduction attempts, you can't exactly stick to a rigid schedule there. Absolutely. They used a delayed multiple baseline for that. Couldn't exactly delay teaching safety skills just to have perfect baselines. Huh? Imagine telling parents, hold on, we need to wait a few weeks before we teach your child how to stay safe. 
not going to fly. Exactly. Had to be flexible, adapt, which happens a lot in this kind of research. Still showed their program worked, even with the staggered start. Okay, so delayed multiple baseline. It's like the backup plan when life happens. Any other tricks up the research sleeve? Well, let's say you're teaching piano. You wouldn't test every note, every scale after every lesson, right? That's where the multiple probe design shines. So instead of measuring everything all the time, you use quick probes, like those pop quizzes in school. See if we were paying attention. Precisely. Cooper had that example with middle schoolers. Science vocab. Mm. Instead of tests after every lesson, quick probes to check specific terms, concepts. Saves time, stress, and prevents what they call, what was it? Artificially bad baseline data, right? Like constant testing just makes you feel worse. Not because you're not learning, but because it's too much. You got it. Multiple probe finds that balance. Mm. Enough data to see progress, but without overwhelming anyone. Strategic and thoughtful. Not just about more data, more better. Right? Exactly. Now there's the non-concurrent multiple baseline, mm -hmm. but approach this one carefully. It's tempting when you've got data from different people at different times, but... Not as reliable as the others, like, looks good on paper, not so much in real life. Yeah, the very vivid analogy, but you're not wrong. Without those baselines running side by side, it's tough to rule out other things that might be causing the changes. Like saying, this energy drink makes me more productive, but maybe it's a new productivity system or just feeling motivated? Hard to tell. Exactly. Classic correlation, not causation. Mm -hmm. So, non-concurrent multiple baseline may be tempting, but stick to the stronger variations if you can. Solid advice. So we've covered a lot with multiple baselines, the classic, the variations, even one to maybe not use one. Before we move on, what are the big takeaways here? The big one, multiple baseline designs in all their forms are powerful for really understanding what works in behavior change, like detective work for your habits. Love that analogy. And it highlights something key. This isn't just for researchers. These are tools we can all use. Absolutely. Breaking bad habits, learning new stuff, understanding our own changes. Thinking like a behavioral scientist can really help. It's like leveling up your self-awareness. Okay, so we've tackled those multiple baseline designs, but what about when you want to change something gradually? Like not all at once, but step by step. Ah, you're talking about the changing criterion designs, like climbing a staircase. Each step gets you closer to the goal. Right, not a sudden switch, but those little changes that add up over time. Exactly. Instead of comparing different behaviors, like with a multiple baseline, we're comparing the same behavior to itself, just at tougher and tougher levels. So, like, how would you use that in real life? Give me an example. Let's say you want to start meditating. Most people can't just go from zero to Zen master overnight. Right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you start with just five minutes a day. Five minutes. Even I can do that. Exactly. Once you've got that down, bump it up to seven, then 10, and so on. Each time you hit that new goal, it reinforces the behavior, makes the next step easier. I like that it builds in those small wins along the way, like leveling up in a game. Perfect analogy. And just like in those games, each level up has to be challenging, but not so hard you give up. Right. Got to find that balance. Which reminds me... That example in Cooper with Jonah and the medical alert bracelet. That one really got me. Powerful example, right? Jonah, like a lot of kids, hated wearing that bracelet, but his family, they knew how important it was. And they used this changing criterion design to help him get used to it. Exactly. They started super small, like just wearing it for a few seconds. If he could handle that, they'd praise him, then increase the time a little. It's like getting a kid used to swimming. You don't just toss him in the deep end. Exactly. Over time... Jonah could wear it longer and longer. It really shows how powerful this step-by-step -step approach can be. That's amazing. Okay, so this is great for gradual change, but there's some things to keep in mind, right? No design's perfect. Always thinking critically. One thing with the changing criterion, it doesn't have that clear reversal like some other designs. Meaning you can't just go back to an earlier step to prove it was the gradual increase that was making the difference. Exactly, you could go back for a bit, but then you're not really moving forward, are you? Defeats the purpose? Makes sense. So it's more about that forward momentum. Right. It's best when your goal is to increase or decrease something steadily. Not so much about testing what happens if you take the intervention away completely. Okay, so we've got these two great designs. Multiple baseline for those multifaceted situations and changing criterion for that steady climb towards a goal. How do people listening decide which one's right for them? tough choice. I like your thinking. 
It's like this. If you're tackling a few different behaviors or want to see if something works in different places, multiple baseline is your friend. It's like the Swiss army knife of behavior change. Exactly. But if you zeroed in on one behavior, want to change it gradually, changing criterion is the way to go. So multiple behaviors, multiple settings, go multiple baseline. One behavior, gradual change, go changing criterion. Got it. Got yeah. it. And always remember, good, solid baselines are key, no matter what. You got to know what you're starting with before you can change it, it's right? It's like that before picture, got to have it before you remodel. Perfect analogy. And whether you're measuring football plays or minutes of meditation, those changes, those steps you take, make sure they're big enough to matter. Got to see that clear difference. Exactly. That's how you know it's working. Wow. We've covered so much ground today. From multiple baselines to the changing criterion, all about bringing that scientific thinking to behavior change. And hopefully giving everyone listening some ideas to try. These designs, they're not just for research labs. They're for anyone who wants to understand their own behavior better. It's like we've all leveled up our self-awareness today. So next time you're trying to change a habit, learn something new, think about what we talked about. Those baselines, the interventions, those steps. You might be surprised how much more successful you can be. On that note of empowered self-discovery, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Until next time, keep those brains engaged because every day is a chance to experiment with your own behavior.